Welcome to Name Three Songs. I'm Sarah Fagan. I'm Jenna Million, and this is a podcast where we discuss feminist issues in music and pop culture, all while empowering fangirls. Because let's be honest, fangirls knew about that band way before you did. And today, we have a silly, 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 goofy episode, (laughs) but also... If you didn't know, we just put out an interview with the Aces, and it is our new favorite thing. We are now obsessed with them. We share one brain with them, <laughs> and we want you all to go and love them, too, so everyone needs to go listen to our interview. Yeah, we've been interviewing a lot of exciting artists recently, having lots of really cool conversations on our radio show. If you guys have been listening, I'm sure you're aware, but the Aces have been on my list of people I wanted to talk to for the podcast for ages, so it was really exciting getting them on the radio show and it feeling like a normal name three songs episode instead of just a radio truly, interview truly <laughs> this is like about look you want to hear them talk about joe and sophie we we did it we covered it <laughs> you want to hear them talk about miley cyrus and her back being exposed on vanity fair we got it like we covered it <laughs> they like they are beautiful amazing people talk about misogyny in media talk about where feminism is moving talking about how being a woman and being queer is political just by existing it's a really great conversation i think so many of you would love it and appreciate it so that is on our podcast feed right below the episode you're currently listening to and today we will be talking about the sophie joe updates that have happened in the last week of sophie suing joe for their kids passports and then today's update of them being in new york as well as sophie being team taylor swift so we are talking about that at the end of this uh, at that towards the end of the episode and we're gonna put time stamps on everything and other than that we're just having a silly goofy time this week we are talking about taylor swift and travis kelsey because i know so many of you <laughs> You have been wanting us to talk about this because it's the stuff that y'all are fangirling about. Yeah. So after our fangirl nonsense, we are going to be talking about Travis Taylor. Yeah. We're essentially doing our fangirl nonsense and then your fangirl, your fangirl nonsense. nonsense. <laughs> and then Sophie Joe news. Yeah. Because it's like... Which is all of our fangirl nonsense. Yeah. And it's just, it's funny because like obviously the Travis and Taylor stuff is like pop culture news and it's interesting to discuss, but it's also majorly fangirl nonsense because like yes. it's so silly it's so dumb there are absolutely no like (laughs) political ramifications to them dating (laughs) (laughs) it is we're putting our brains on easy mode we're getting a little tree she is like climbing a 250 pound six foot three tree like (laughs) we're good (laughs) like we're safe (laughs) He's just like giggling at the touchdown line. I don't even know if that's the right word, but like we're we're all learning about football together. (laughs) It's so funny. So many of you are experiencing football for the first time. Anyways, timestamps on the store if you want them. And we're getting into all of it, starting with our fangirl nonsense. I feel like I have a lot to say this week. Yeah, I feel like Jenna has more. Yeah, I feel like you have more to say than I do this week. Okay, so. Jungkook and Stray Kids performed at Global Citizen. Well, Stray Kids were supposed to perform, but some of the members got in a, like, light car accident. Apparently, they're okay, but they've, like, canceled their schedules because of it. So, three members of Stray Kids performed, and they're known as Three Racha. And these are the three members who produce all their songs, and they're, like, the rap line of the group. It's Bang Chen, Changbin, and then Han. And they are so good they are so good also i didn't realize this was like a big thing where everyone just plays three songs for some reason i thought we were getting like 30 minutes from every artist and then i saw three songs and i was like they appeared for three they flew from korea for three songs i feel like everything i've heard about global citizens is confusing because it's like a bunch of famous people telling normal people who got free tickets to a concert how they, that can, they should care about the world. Yeah, like how to change things to fix the world when it's like, you know, if like three of you stop flying private, it would fix more things than all of us taking yeah. five minutes showers, right? Yeah. Well, also, <laughs> like I mean, so we're going to talk about Taylor Swift today, but I did see a really funny tweet about how she's like, oh, her new boyfriend is in America. That means she's not going to be CO2 princess anymore. <laughs> But anyways, so yeah, so I mean, I also, I was like, should I go? Because it was like a few days after my birthday. I was like, that would be so fun. Because it was torrential. I know, it rained rained so much. It rained all weekend. It was horrible. Yeah. (laughs) It was so bad. At your BTS babes, I was DMing with them on Instagram the other night because they went to 
global citizen so they like camped out like got totally rained on but they had like front row pov of like jungkook so three racha were very 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 good they're like very very talented every time i see them perform i'm just like they're so good and they're just like incredibly talented rappers and producers and their music is so different than like what like txt is what bts is any of that so like very cool to see them together on stage because their synergy is just amazing but then jungkook also performed solo and of course he is sweetie baby angel cakes like can do no wrong except that his drummer was the most annoying person to ever exist jenna sent me a video of jungkook and she was like this is disgusting like the drummer like in parentheses and i looked at i was like jenna why is this man naked it looks like he didn't yes. have pants on like okay obviously there's not a lot of men that listen to this podcast but i'm assuming some of you might have like tall skinny boyfriends does is every man that's over six foot two not know how to sit properly so that it looks like their like back is folded <laughs> like it just like you know what i mean like his torso looked so long that i was like is he sitting on his back and that's why it looks like he has no pants on because I feel like men above a certain height who are like skinny just like sit so like they're I don't know if they know what their butt yeah. is. <laughs> this man was very much having his Travis Barker moment in a time when it did not need to happen. Like there's absolutely it was like raining. Like it was probably like relatively like cool ish. Like there's no reason yes. his shirt should have been off in the first place. Number no. two, Jungkook performed four songs. There's no reason his shirt should have been off in the first place. Number three, Jungkook is literally like singing a heartfelt song about how much he loves his fans. This man Man's shirt did not need to be off. It was so distracting because also he was like dead center on stage. Oh my so God. like every time Jungkook like paced across the stage, here's this man with his shirt off drumming. Looking fully nude. Yes. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> But Jungkook did announce a new single is coming called 3D. It's coming out this Friday, I believe, featuring Jack Harlow. And I, Sarah, I sent this to you on TikTok. I don't yeah. know if you saw it. People are speculating that Addison Rae is going to be in a music video for it. I mean, she was posting like they were buddies. Like she was posting. Yeah. And I'm like. She was posting stuff on her Instagram story saying like Jungkook knows what's best. But, but like, it's no also, photos with him or anything. Because it's also like. This is the annoying thing about when famous people do stuff like this because it's like, is she just being a fangirl or like, was she yeah. hanging out with Jungkook? Yes. Like, does she just watch his boyfriend POV videos or, yes. <laughs> or like, did he show her personally his favorite snack? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that is the question so that's why people are speculating that addison ray might be in the music video sarah also i don't know if you saw these the concept photos but they're very like y2k 2000s in like a spaceship in that white like weird <laughs> zoomy space room with white lights okay so this is again me being a little bit confused about k-pop are these singles yeah. that are going to be on an album where like everything is has the same concept or does each single have a different concept I mean, right now, the singles are just singles. We don't know. We don't know if they will end up being on an album or not. Like, he's working towards an album, but I don't know if they will. All, like, it's not. It could be. It could be related. Yeah. It could not be related. We don't have enough information yet. Yeah. Because I was just curious because I feel like Addison Ray just dropped an album. It was very Y2K. So, like, that would make more sense for a song with her than with a song with Jack Harlow. Well, if anything, it seems like Addison Ray might just be an actress yeah. in the music video yeah um but not but as of right now not featuring on it as of right now all we know is jack harlow which also somebody was in our dms asking for thoughts and opinions on jack harlow because he didn't know anything um he's just a dude like he seemingly has not done anything wrong but his second album kind of flopped he made a song called dua lipa <laughs> <laughs> it's like good friend of the pod larisha paul would die for jack harlow so i feel like that's like a good enough stamp of approval <laughs> she could, he's our check of approval because of larisha paul yeah, exactly all should be well i mean i think it would be like if anything it would be really cool like yeah because i don't know Jung cook is obviously like a trendy artist right now jack harlow is somewhat a trendy artist right now so like i feel like it would just be like a fun song i'm excited for the single and that means we're getting a music video which means i might cry again <laughs> Love it. Love it. My fangirl moment of the week is an unexpected one in that for work, just for funsies, I was like, hey, we write about Kiki Palmer a lot. She's doing music again and she's playing in New York City. Can I go shoot it? And like the head of the music team was like, yeah, sure. Why not? And one of the writers was like, oh, I want to go. I love Kiki Palmer. So we went not expecting anything. We get an email from like PR the day of a show and they're like, Kiki Palmer goes on at 8.30. 
doors were at like 7 30 we're like what do you mean she goes on at 8 30 like no opener yeah we're like she is the whole show we're like what is happening so we arrive there are two djs on opposite sides of the stage and there's a slideshow playing of three photos of kiki palmer from the same photo shoot just playing on a loop <laughs> Welcome to the Kiki Palmer show. Literally. And so we're like, already, this energy is everything. But it feels like everybody in this venue is confused as to what's happening. Like, nobody knows what the vibes are. This goes on for like 10, 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden, the DJs, like the music gets lower. The screen that was playing the slideshow now is playing a sketch of Kiki Palmer, where she's playing four different characters, and oh then God. her mom is playing like herself or like her manager or something, because her mom yeah. like is her manager in real life. And the four versions of Kiki Palmer are having a discussion on what ridiculous PR stunt they can pull to promote the album. <laughs> Because she, like, just had an album come out called, yeah, like, yeah. Boss or something like that. And it was just, like, so funny. We're all confused. So, like, that happens. And then the DJs keep playing music. And then, like, right before she comes out on stage, another character that she's invented who's, like, this sassy British lady. Has, there's, like, another sketch of, like, her talking about how, like, this is a Kiki Palmer show. Whatever. And so then Kiki comes on stage. Her energy is insane. Like... <laughs> I really don't know how to explain it, but it's just like she knows that she's the most famous person in the world. Like, I like, but like, she is big boss. She yeah. is big boss. And it's like not in like an arrogant way, it's just in like everybody should be looking at me all the time kind of way. And I deserve yeah. it fully. And I yes. was like, yes, you do. Yes, she does. She had, there were four back, backup dancers. She's doing full choreo. With, when she's singing, like she's interacting with the crowd. It's like the craziest thing I've ever seen. So I shoot my three songs. I go back up to the balcony. Miss Girl does one more song. And then she's like, can somebody bring me a chair? I'm going to talk to y'all. They bring her a stool. Then on the screen behind her is like a still from the movie that she made to go with this album that just came out because she did like a visual, like a visual album alongside yeah. of it. And she's like, I'm going to talk you guys through some of my favorite moments from the visual. And she's like, which is a movie that I produced off my record label and my production company. Because Kiki Palmer has done everything except for make a beauty line. Like, she does movies. She does TV. She does singing. She does production. She has her own record label. She has her own production company. She has a TV network called Key TV. I didn't know this until last night. And so she, like, talks us through all this. She does a couple more songs. Then she, like, goes to do an outfit change. And while she's doing an outfit change, they're playing clips of all the highlights from every movie she's ever been in. Oh, my God. <laughs> then she does another song. And then she's like, oh, this is, like, a Kiki Palmer show without us, like, playing a game together. And so then she leaves the stage, goes down into the crowd, goes to her merch booth, she goes, okay, we're going to play some Kiki Palmer trivia. If you guys know the answer to the question, I'm going to give you free merch. So then she starts asking people Kiki Palmer trivia questions and just throwing merch to whoever gets the question right. <laughs> it was crazy. It was so crazy. And then for the end of the set, she does like that fake out like, oh, like that's all. Bye. She runs off the stage. Another like sketch comes down and it's her like getting unready. So like her mom is holding her baby in this video kiki's like talking about it they're like joking with the baby about like oh like what was your favorite song and then kiki's mom is like oh he said like big boss or like whatever and she's like oh my god i forgot to play it and then she like runs back like you see her run out of the <laughs> like, run out of the dressing room on the thing and then run onto the stage it was oh crazy god. i'm like her own she's like hyping up her own encore literally it was like the Kiki Palmer variety hour. Like it was iconic. I'm like, give her a give her a Las Vegas residency. Yeah, I was like, give her a Broadway show. Like this should be yeah. an event. This should be a three hour event that yeah. everyone goes to. Literally. I'm like, let her showcase she like, all of her talents at once. Is she like touring or was this just like a one off thing? No, she's doing she's like doing she's doing a tour. It's like I don't think it's very she's like, long. I don't need to open She's doing it. Yeah. I am the opener. Yeah. I am the She's like, I, <laughs> I am, am the whole the moment. meal. I'm everything. I'm like, yes, you are. You're you're the people's princess. <laughs> like, I love that she's having this resurgence. It's just like it's incredible. And she like just recently put out the album and then she's like, oh, I'm gonna be putting out on a deluxe a deluxe edition because there's some songs that I wrote when I was younger that I feel are very relevant to my life now. So I'm re-recording them to put on the deluxe edition. 
Damn. And she also was like talking about like people that she trusted in the music industry who like were wolves in sheep's clothing and like all this stuff. And I was like, she is spilling you know what? the tea. <laughs> like <laughs> kiki palmer kiki palmer would yell at justin timberlake for us i think she would and i stand by that <laughs> i think she would we I, thought megan we thought <laughs> megan was on our side she's not i think kiki palmer has no time for any kiki man. palmer remembers what what justin timberlake <laughs> did to janet jackson and she has not lived a day now. that is our roman empire <laughs> <laughs> Justin Timberlake really, like, wronging Janet Jackson and ruining her career is our Roman Empire. I mean, I do think about it a lot, especially now because Justin Timberlake really, like, has realized that his personal capital is worth nothing and he needed to rejoin his boy band for people to care about him again, which is like for the Trolls movie. Honestly, honestly, gross. Like everybody's gross. everybody's like celebrating this in sync reunion, which like I agree, like I love it for the rest of them. Justin, I don't fucking care about. But I do think that it's a beautiful fall from, like, grace and fame that, like, he had to use the Trolls movie as, like, a way to be like, hey, guys, let's get the band back together. <laughs> like, <laughs> The sad thing is that I don't think anyone is giving him enough shit for no. it. <laughs> no, not at all. Like, and that's, like, the No one, one has thing. realized that all this is because of the Trolls movie. Like, the, uh, I wonder if they're not because of the sa- like the SAG and uh, WGA strikes, so like they can't give him shit about it because you're not allowed to talk about struck know. work. So, so like, he's, he's not working as an actor right now. Yeah, he's working he, as a musician yeah, right now. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I so I wonder if like that's why because I feel like on Hot Ones like Sean Evans would have done it. Like it feels interesting, you know, interesting because yeah. I feel like he loves those like kind of like gotcha moments where like. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't gonna do a Drew Barrymore. Mm-mm. Another piece of fangirl news before I am gonna re- we are gonna talk about the fangirl news that you guys wanted us to talk about because a lot of people were in our DMs about this. But before we get there, I just want to also take a mu- minute to talk about Choice of On. <laughs> He's now released a second song called "Got Me Started" with a music video, and I love what he is doing with this era. If anyone's been paying attention, this dance is kind of popping off on the internet right now both on like reels and tiktok there's like this full dance that's going on the whole film is like very color treated that kind of matches like the rush music video that came out i love this era it feels like he's being fully a-list pop star mm. which like obviously choice of had like a very big impact on like the tumblr youth of like 2014 era like if you were there but i feel like he was never an a-list celebrity and Mm-mm. maybe now he will be yeah i think that it's really cool to watch how his career has gone from like youtuber to like what he is now it's really interesting because it is also funny like that i feel like he's also one of us Yes, (laughs) like we went through the same things together yeah yeah and i think just just like his i think just like his social media presence and stuff it's just like he's very much like an online I mean, I guess the youth is the wrong word, but like he feels just like an internet now adult. He feels he like was, he was yeah, an internet he was like youth. an internet an youth, internet and, an and now an internet adult. And I just think it's so funny. But my personal fangirl giggle moment was the fact that they, he was given so much shit for the Rush music video because everybody, like all the dancers, were just skinny gay men. And then in this video, they're still just skinny gay men. But then there's like a couple fatties. <laughs> In the, background, in the background for decoration for decoration and i just think it's funny because it's like as like a plus size person like it didn't bother me like watching that first music video and it just being a bunch of people that looked like him because i'm like i don't know i i live in a city i feel like most skinny gay men only hang out with other skinny gay men like that's like just what the groups are and i'm like it's just factual yeah. lack of diversity it was just factual like, statements and, and so i just think it's funny he because was speaking his truth because it's like obviously diversity is important it's super important i feel like it's more important in like film and tv and like workplaces than like in a one-off music video again this is just my personal opinion so i just think it's funny that like he heard people complaining was like let's just throw some normal people in the background of this music video (laughs) and i just feel like the fact that not only were they in the background but they were like prominently in the background so like they could not be missed is troy being like (laughs) It was never and will never be that fucking serious. <laughs> I just think yeah, it's so funny. Yeah. But he had a, like a legit dance crew be part of this music video. And I personally like am obsessed with it feels like 
the GP of America is accepting dancing pop stars again. We talked about this on our radio show this weekend. Yeah. But I feel like people are fully embracing it. I think it's come full circle with like TikTok of like TikTok dancers, not just being like upper body dancers anymore, but actually being full body dancers. And like when I got into dance and I got into K-pop at the same time and I like it really helped fuel like my interest in both because like watching K-pop idols who were just like such talented dancers like was truly incredible. And I think it's something that like is it, it, like is an art to appreciate in itself. And I, I'm like glad that it feels like this is maybe coming into like Western music more. Yeah, no, I agree. And speaking of our radio show, which Jenna just dropped in there nonchalantly, in case you guys have been living under a rock or like just ignoring the random things that keep popping up on the podcast feed for y'all on Sundays, we have been doing a radio show where we've been interviewing some really exciting artists. And this past Sunday, like uh, the episode that just recently came out or interview that recently came out, we got to talk to the Aces, who's a band I've been listening to for like three years now. And I'm obsessed with them. Like I love their music so much. And the conversation was as if we built friends in a lab. <laughs> like, no, we shared we shared one brain with them. Yeah. We shared the same brain. It was it was <laughs> all in, just... it was incredible. Like it would have been one of those situations where, like, if we had been in the same room, I think Jenna and I just would have been, like, grabbing each other's, like, thighs the whole time, <laughs> like, trying to not scream from excitement of, like, the discussion that was happening. We could have hung out with them the whole day, honestly. Yeah, like, literally. They were saying everything we've ever said on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, it was just, like, it was, it's so incredible just saying, like, the smallest thing and, like, hoping for the best because I feel like in writing interviews, sometimes, like, you have a thought that's, like, a good thought, but you don't know how to turn it into a question and we're like like when Jenna and I are doing it we're like okay I hope I hope that they just take this thought so I don't need to ask a bad question at the end of a good thought and they just took all of the thoughts and continued them and it was just like so incredible because because like I don't know it was just crazy because you know you have a plan and then the plan didn't go the way it was supposed to but it went better because they were like oh we love pop culture and I was like fuck you want to talk about Sophie and Joe (laughs) let's unpack misogyny and media they they volunteered that I know. They, we did not point them in that direction. <laughs> Incredible. They were like, let's talk about Miley Cyrus's Vanity Fair cover where her back is exposed. <laughs> I, I was like, you came with receipts. <laughs> you came with receipts. <laughs> and you didn't even know you needed them. Like, that was even better where it's like, oh my God, what is happening? They lived it. It was incredible. Um, Anyways, I- <laughs> highly, highly, highly recommend. Go listen. Go listen. And then become an Aces fan and then come chat with us about it. Yes. But you guys have also been fangirling about stuff this week. And so Jenna had a feeling that you guys were going to be. I think, obviously, everybody's losing their minds about Taylor and Tra- uh, Travis Kelsey. But because Jenna was being nosy, she asked all of y'all on Instagram <laughs> what you guys have been freaking out about. So what was some what were some Everyone highlights? said Taylor and Travis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone said Taylor and Travis. <laughs> there were no other answers. <laughs> I will read some of the responses that we got, though, because some of them are amusing. Okay, so first, when I posted this, it was a, like, Taylor's at the football game, Kansas City Chiefs, she's yeah. at the football game, and then afterwards, we get a video on TikTok, like, behind the scenes of them walking, like, backstage, or whatever, and, like, holding hands, and I put up a poll that says, are you team Travis Taylor, or do you think it's weird? 58% said your team Travis Taylor and 42% think it's weird. We're both for it. We want Taylor to have her um <laughs> her cheerleader moment, her she wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts, like she needs her cheer captain moment. <laughs> but here's some of the responses we got. Leah says I think it's for the lols. Sorry, some of your usernames are very long, so I'm not reading all the usernames. Someone says, I love that for her, the way fans have been simping, I don't get it. Like his face is so forgettable. Okay, same. <laughs> Because before Taylor was even dating him, people were like, oh my God, Travis Kelsey's so hot. Like literally I I heard people talking about this. I'm like, he is a man with a face and muscles. Really? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Do you think, do you think he's hot? Yeah. Okay. He's like, to me, he's like Channing Tatum. He's hot. He's just like. I think so. He kind of looks like Channing Tatum. I, yeah, I guess. But I think because of work, I've become aware of him and he is like major himbo vibes and like you know i is love he? a man with no thoughts <laughs> um okay i know nothing about him so that i mean but that checks out so he is he average just, looking like, 
He just like and has no thoughts. He yeah. So, he, just, he just like the only thing he has going for him is football is his job. He's like a little bit goofy. He like loves his mom a lot. Like I don't know. He's a it's Ken. just like he's like yeah. He's like good vibes. He's a Ken. Okay, he gets a pass from Sarah. Sophie says off to Google what the NFL is <laughs> because Sophie lives in the UK. <laughs> I think a lot of Swifties were off to Google what the NFL is. Angela says she needed to branch out, but NFL boyfriend is dangerous. Here for the drama, though. Someone said, You Belong With Me is their song. <laughs> Cute. Joseph Dubé says, Gonna need a football song. Gonna need a Taylor Swift, right? The walkout anthem for Kansas City Chiefs Stop. challenge. Stop. It is drama because Taylor is a known Eagles fan, apparently. I don't know. I'm not a sports girl except for baseball, really. But she, like, I think in more than one song has mentioned, like, Eagles paraphernalia, which is like Philadelphia team of football, and like Eagles fans are crazy. And last year, I think in the Super Bowl or recently in a Super Bowl, I don't know, the Chiefs beat the Eagles, and the other Kelsey brother is on the Eagles. Oh, <laughs> so, so there's also football drama involved in the pop culture excitement. Interesting. Honestly, I think football world has been way more excited about this than like Swifties have been because like I've seen a like like a lot of sports channels are like reporting on this because he's been doing interviews. Wait, Sarah, I feel like you know more about the how they got together situation than I do. Okay. So this whole situation is very funny because basically Travis went to the Eras tour and he made Taylor Swift a friendship bracelet with his phone number on it. And he and his brother have a podcast where they just like talk about football and silly goofy brother nonsense. And they were talking about it. And Jason, which is his brother's name, I think like asking him if he like shot his shot with Taylor. Like I can't remember, but basically Travis was saying how a bunch of like fans were giving him friendship bracelets and he was like, it was so cool. But he was like, but I made Taylor a friendship bracelet and I couldn't give it to her because since she's a she's, famous woman no because he's like because since she's performing 44 songs every single night she can't talk to people before or after the set because she needs to rest her voice and he goes so i thought i was gonna get to meet her and i didn't and i'm a little bit butthurt about it and so he was like i shot my shot like now the ball's in taylor's court he like said this like whatever and it's funny because i feel like to people who don't know about sports like a sports ball player is like not a famous person like they're just like this is just like a rich man within nfl he's like very famous he's like so like my mom my mom loves football and she's been messaging me she's like when are you gonna talk about this on the podcast like she's like he's a famous man you need to talk about it and it's just like it's funny because like as a person who was like a very big baseball fan like to me, David Wright, who was like my favorite baseball player growing up, was like the most famous person in the whole world. To most people, it's like, who the hell is that? And so I just think it's funny, like when we've talked about like, oh, like what what qualifies somebody as an A-lister? Like Tom Brady is a, a sports ball player. <laughs> football, he's a footballer, but he's like he very sports famous. Ball? <laughs> he's, he's, he's very famous. But also I wonder if like the fact that he was married to Giselle made him like an A-lister. Like, I don't know. No, but, no, no. But, but because I think, of like, his career, yeah. he's very Well, no, famous. I know that too, but I just mean, like, I feel... He's famous to you because he married Giselle. <laughs> yes. No, but I'm saying that, like, I don't... I can't, like, other than, like, Derek Jeter and, like, Tiger Woods, like, I can't think of a lot of A-lists, like, sportsmen who, like, weren't A-listers just them do you know what i mean i just think you have pop culture brain so Me, no, my know, impression no, of this know, is different I, no, because i, I grew up I in know. a football household i know that's, that's what i'm but th- but that's what i'm saying is like knowing a sports figure because you watch sports versus like just being a normal person who goes about life who like maybe doesn't watch sports doesn't pay attention to pop culture like you can meet a random person on the street who doesn't know about pop culture but knows who george clooney is would they know who a famous footballer is if, i mean maybe not? given the demographics of america and considering that fangirls are usually stigmatized i would consider that the gp is football fans and most people are not pop culture fans that i feels, think most people on the street know feels about illegal. sports anyway i think i think <laughs> i think the percentage skews more sports than pop culture i don't know because i guess it's just like to me they're not a-listers because they're not to me usher is performing at the super bowl okay so this is <laughs> that's also funny sorry i will get i will continue with the sorry i just keep going down rabbit holes it is also funny though because on the same day that this taylor swift 
Travis Kelsey, like her being at the Chiefs game happened. They announced the Ushers playing the Super Bowl. The Usher tweet, like the tweet announcement, which is Kim Kardashian announcing that Usher is doing the Super Bowl halftime show, has like 7,000 impressions on Twitter. The Taylor Swift, the first video of her being seen at this Chiefs game, had like 63 million impressions. Yeah. And yeah. it's like insane. Yeah. But anyway, so back to the original explanation. So like Travis says like, oh, like the ball's in Taylor's court. Like I did what I could, but like whatever. I wasn't I wasn't able to meet her. And then I think he was like in other interviews, like his brother was like making jokes about it, like hinting that like they're dating. And then also was like, oh, what am I supposed to know? Like, it's just my brother. Like, I'm just like saying what he whatever. And then Travis said that like, oh, like I watched Taylor like rock the stage at Arrowwood. Now she needs to come watch me also rock the stage at Arrowwood because I guess like he she performed it's at, sta- yeah, yeah, at their yeah. stadium. And so he's like just been kind of like going over the top in regards to like him this is literally the equivalent of jack harlow writing a song called dua lipa yes i guess <laughs> but he's like been publicly doing this and actually like yes. Te- teffy posted a really funny tiktok today about how like every man who's like fine <laughs> is what she was saying is like super cringy because like they've always been like that hot like their whole lives and so they've never had to like rely on their personality to get a girl because they're just hot and so she was like they're just kind of like goofy and like don't care because nobody's judging them and they can just do whatever they want and say whatever they want like obviously not in like a bad way but just kind of like in a goofy cringy kind of way and so she's like so when taylor swift gets the ick because like travis kelsey is like doing the dougie at like a family barbecue it's gonna be like the worst ick you can ever get because the ick from a hot man who's cringe all the time is like the worst kind of ick. And I was like, this you cannot recover from yeah, that. And ick. I was just like, this is so funny. Um, but yeah, so like everybody kind of just thought that Travis was just taking the opportunity for the press, taking people's interests like to heart, kind of just being like, okay, like people think it's funny that I talked about this with my brother on the podcast. I'm just going to lean into it and like, see what happens. She went and in conclusion, she went and watched the game from the box suite with his mom. There's been like so much random stuff coming out. And like, I don't know what is fact, what is blind item at this point. I feel like they just recently met. Yeah, obviously like, people are speculating and there's always like the, oh, like this has been going on, whatever. Like that's why he was being so goofy and like why he was tweeting so much about it because he already knew that like he had her in the bag. I don't think so. I don't I th- think so either. I think that like Taylor is obviously in like her chaos dating era, clearly. But I don't know. It's it's I would assume that after Joe Alwyn and after like the songs we've gotten about Joe Alwyn and their weird relationship at the weird end to their relationship and it's seemingly being that like he was like what do you mean you don't want to like live in the woods with me forever what do you mean you want to be a superstar and everybody know your name i feel like if i was taylor i would be very flattered that like a successful famous man was publicly being like i think it's so hot and cool that this woman is so powerful and impressive he's being a ken on main for her yeah like i think i would be like so obsessed with it and be like yeah Yeah. sign me up like how do i do it but i saw i think it was a a blind item saying that like she not only like went but she like went to the game with like his family and the like family bus that they take to like chiefs games And then there was also this thing about how, and this was like reported on by like people and a couple other publications, like page six too, about how either Travis or Taylor, like one of the, I think it was Travis, like they rented out a restaurant to have an after party. So that way they could like celebrate without people bothering Taylor. And so they like did that and they like drove to the restaurant in like Travis's convertible. Like Taylor usually travels in like a, presidential level secure car and she's like out in a convertible with this man <laughs> she's taking some risks so i don't know it's just crazy she's risking it all for him just risking it all for love she's putting love on the line i mean i saw i saw another tiktok that i thought was funny which is i can't remember what exactly they said that it was but it's like the thing where like you get out of a really long-term relationship that you thought was going to be your forever relationship and then you like hook up with or date like a couple dirt bags and then one of them just like completely fucks you up and then the next person you date is like a very 
quote unquote normal and then you marry them <laughs> oh no and i was like i'm here for it my favorite two tweets that i've seen about this is number one it's nice that taylor swift is visiting her stadiums while they turn into mojo dojo casa <laughs> houses for the football season okay i i liked the fact that somebody tweeted football explainer for those confused <laughs> and then it's yes. like a thread <laughs> Yes. like how football works and then like swifties, swifties. yeah like yeah replying and replying and being like what's a down <laughs> it's so funny sarah's also asking these questions guys <laughs> i know some things about football my other favorite tweet is remember when the barbies took back barbie land by distracting all the kens <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, there were a lot of good tweets. There was also like some of my favorites were can't wait to hear the album Taylor writes after finally dating someone hot. (laughs) (laughs) And Travis Kelsey is actually living proof that anything can happen if you're delusional. (laughs) I mean, so is Hailey Bieber. (laughs) I love it so much. I love it so much. We do have other Taylor news to get to today, which is that on 1989, Taylor's version, she has released her track list or hinted at it, whichever came first. (laughs) I didn't read all of that. I'm happy for her, though. And there's going to be a song on it called Slut in all caps exclamation point. Okay, but not only in all caps exclamation point, it's also in quotes. And this is the fact that it's in quotes makes me feel like the song did not have a name until recently because i love was <laughs> everyone listen everyone listen sarah's putting straight facts right now go ahead because i so as we all know taylor swift has a history of being slut shamed in the media there's a history of people just hating her because she's dated men like honestly i don't even think she has that many ex-boyfriends like on the list of things that annoy me about Taylor, her dating life is not on it. <laughs> like, Except for the Kennedy. <laughs> okay, yeah, but that's that was problematic. <laughs> like, that was weird. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Except for the Kennedy. <laughs> but, obviously, if you guys know anything about, like, g- Google searching, which is, like, a dumb thing to say, but listen, if you put Taylor Swift and then, like, in, per- like, in quotes, slut, now... Well, oh, the first thing that's going to come up is going to be her song on 1989 because of how SEO and Google searching works. Yes. <laughs> and I'm obsessed with it because you're going to have to try harder to find articles that are calling Taylor a slut. Yes. Now, because of the specific She's way girl bossing which once again. she put the song title. And I'm just like... <sighs> This is incredible. This also, I don't know if we actually said this on the podcast or if like Sarah and I were just talking, but you also said this about that article about Joe Jonas, like ring yeah, I said camera, it, yeah. about the, so like Sophie Turner being caught on a ring camera. And it was so that if people Googled like Joe Jonas plus ring, that's what would pop up instead of like stuff about their wedding rings. Yeah. Because there were like articles about the fact like, oh, Jokey is putting it on and putting it off. Like, what does that mean? And so I think that like, again, for his team to try and control the narrative more, because that obviously was not a narrative that they were controlling. They wanted to put out a different story with Ring that made Sophie look bad rather than it looked like Joe is being wishy-washy about the divorce. And so I think similarly with Taylor, it's like, this is just like a really smart move. Like, I'm sure, I mean, also, if you put into conjunction, like what was happening during 1989 era and her dating history and all of that, I'm sure like makes sense for the time as well, whatever the song is. But I just think that like, maybe it was the song name all along, but it just feels like something when she's dating again and then therefore like the conversation around it is always going to be you know, linking back to old stories about slut shaming, I would think that it would make a lot of sense when she's like, I'm like, what, a 34 year old woman? Like, stop referring to me as a slut because I'm trying to date, like, leave me alone. Yeah. So I'm just like, iconic. I fully support that. I love it so much. Also in like songs (laughs) that came out that are weird, (laughs) Doja Cat released her full album this past weekend and there's a song on it called Fuck the Girls. And... The lyrics are, fuck the girls, they ain't with me, then they with me, so fuck the girls, I don't need them, I'm too pretty, fuck the girls, every region, every city, the whole damn world, stay saying fuck the girls. And then goes on to talk about, girls don't let girls live, but that ain't killing me. I think she's basically calling out, like, 
I mean, like, you could read it as, like, calling out cat fights, but also just, like, coupled with all of the fandom stuff and then also with her maybe dating an incel, it feels like it's not... It feels like it's not for us. It feels like it's not for us. It feels like she is fully fuck the girls. Yeah, I'm really upset because I think that Doja Cat is like so talented and could have and like obviously is probably still going to do so much with her career, but it's just like so disappointing to see how much like hatred she has within her and like not positive hatred. Like, this is just, like, really, really negative, bad hatred. Like, it's not, like, being angry and hateful about, like, Mitch McConnell. Like, something that's going to, like, make good happen. This is, like, hatred that could cause wrongdoings. Yeah. She says... I'm just so grateful you a patron. I don't love you hoes. You worship everything you couldn't be. Smoking that Regina, becoming all that you shouldn't be. Like, it feels all around bad. Yeah. I haven't seen... I haven't been on TikTok enough to see what people are saying about this. But I also couldn't find any, like, reviews talking specifically about this. But also, like, I don't feel like her fandom is exclusively women. So, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of layered here. But it doesn't feel good in any way, case, shape, form. Larisha wrote a review about the whole album and I just thought like the sub headline for this review of on her fourth studio album Pop's ultimate edgelord is seeing red and she'll be damned if she doesn't get the last word and like basically like in the article she's just talking about how like she clearly hates her fans she doesn't care about these people she just wants people to listen to her she wants to seem as though she's come out on top even though how can you when you're like trying to prove that you don't give a fuck. And it's like, that's literally what she's trying to do. And in like any time you're trying to prove that you don't care, it just comes off horribly. She's very much trying to distance herself from her, like the previous version of herself, because there's like a Pitchfork review by Madison Bloom that talks about this. But also like just from me watching her music videos, I picked up on this of the videos that she's put out so far are there's this character apparently called Scarlet that's like her painted entirely in red. And like, I think it was at the VMAs also. And to me, that's like the old version of herself that she's killed off of like yeah. what she was talking about. Like I, I got famous with all that like mediocre pop music. It was just a cash grab and now I'm doing what I want. Yeah, I don't understand it. I don't like it. Doesn't bode well. Doesn't bode well. And like, isn't she going on tour soon? Yes. I just feel like it's all going to be weird. Yeah. So with all of the like goofy pop culture stuff out of the way, there have been more updates on Sophie and Joe, which I just wanted to talk about a little bit because I think, again, this is a really interesting case because like, as we talked about in the like the last couple episodes about this it's been interesting watching just like how much so like misogyny doesn't fly with like the audience of the Jonas Brothers and pop culture in general and like Sophie Turner fans and how like stuff we used to be able to get away with in tabloid culture isn't something that we're able to get away with anymore and it's just been interesting because like over the past week there was obviously like the news cycle continued and it was interesting seeing I guess kind of like the media's response to the fact that the misogyny that the sources close to Joe Jonas were feeding them like wasn't working but how to continue what was like tried and tested or whatever basically like most of what we have seen of sophie as we've talked about before is the fact that like she's been in the uk filming this tv show that she's doing it's like one of the first projects that she's done in like a couple years and that's any news we've gotten about her like none of it has been like planned none of it's been like very you know pr directed if you will where like most things like when somebody's going through stuff publicly like everything it feels very like planned out and so On September 15th, in a bunch of different publications, we had articles coming out about the fact that Sophie Turner was, like, on set filming this show. But the headlines, and, like, this was, like, a headline from People, which is, like, Sophie Turner kisses co-star on set while filming amid divorce from Joe Jonas. And so, like, obviously, these are all, like, keywords, whatever. Like, that's how headlines work nowadays. But to me, it was frustrating seeing this because it's like these are photos of them filming a scene from a tv show (laughs) yeah like sophie turner kisses co-star while on set filming like yeah sophie turner is doing her job yeah because they're trying to make it malicious yeah like the wording of it even literally sounds like oh like 
makes you question like are they filming or are they kissing yeah. like on set yeah. and like yeah. This article from People is like, Sophie Turner is focusing her attention on her work as she goes through a divorce with Joe Jonas. And it's like, in photographs obtained by People, the English actress was captured in the action on the set of her upcoming ITVX series, Joan, alongside co-star Frank Dillon. The pair were even pictured kissing while filming a scene. While filming a scene. (laughs) But it's just like, obviously, like, they're good photos. Like, I understand how, like, I understand how pop culture journalism works. But it's so. They were also photographed frolicking in the ocean and smiling from ear to ear. But while filming (laughs) a scene on the beach. And so it's just funny because they, like, say the salacious thing. And then they're like, but it was while filming. While filming. (laughs) Don't sue us. It was while filming. (laughs) It's just like, <laughs> if you want to take this out of context, though, run for it. Yeah, because like there are obviously going to be people who will take it out of context. Like there's going to be like less. I know that trust- pop buzz, yeah, <laughs> that like- pop buzz <laughs> troll account is ready to go hard. Like, but also it's just like there's going to be like less quote unquote trusted outlets who are going to like just say the dumb shit first. You know, just make it clickbaity, and so it was just funny and interesting. Like seeing that happen of being like oh the narrative of sophie turner is the bad guy is still kind of here but like in a different way but all of that shifted because on september 20th sophie turner was seen out on purpose for the first time since all of this stuff happened and who was she seen with taylor swift taylor swift (laughs) you know you know taylor is giving her the playbook For what to do next. Oh, 100%. And I just think, like, for your first, like, planned, like, of, like, a planned, like, candid paparazzi shoot, going to, like, a fancy-ass Italian restaurant with Taylor Swift, uh, being the first time you're seen in public, iconic, incredible. Especially because there also has been, like, kind of a storyline about the fact that, like, obviously Taylor and Joe dated for a little bit when they were both first famous, And then when Sophie and Joe got together, it's like Sophie's like a big fan of Taylor Swift. And so like when whatever Taylor's version it was that had Mr. Perfectly Fine on it, like Sophie posted about it and she was like, sorry, babe, but it's a bop. And then there's like that whole joke where it's like that song was like a nicer song about Joe Jonas. And then there whatever song the Jonas Brothers have that's like about Taylor Swift, like he changed the lyrics to that to be nicer to her. And so it's like this whole like funny thing of like them becoming friends again, whatever. So that added like layer to it, I think is interesting because it's like, oh, Sophie won Taylor. And so I just think like that's interesting because then the following day we find out that Sophie has filed a lawsuit in federal court asking a judge to grant a petition seeking the return of her quote wrongfully retained children to England amid her high profile divorce and so basically what she is saying in this whole thing and like there was like a really great breakdown in law and crime by Matt Naham about what exactly this lawsuit said in it But the gist of it is that Sophie is claiming that she and Joe were selling their Miami home because they were planning to make England their forever home, that they had been in England. Their older daughter was already like enrolled in a preschool and going to classes there. They had like doctors and dentists in England. They were like planning to move there forever. They like had a home that they I think it was was, like being built or something along those lines, like because it said that it wouldn't be ready until December of this year. So I don't really know what that means. But she's saying like he's holding on to their passport so I can't take them to England with me. And it's just like, it's crazy because Joe was also saying like in his filing, like he filed it in Miami and being like, this is like where our home is. And in this documentation, Sophie also broke down the fact that like over the last six months, the girls have barely, like their kids have barely been in Miami. Like they've been in New York or traveling or in England for like the last six months. So, like, it's all giving a lot of weirdness. Uh, Long Crime reached out to Joe's reps for them to, like, respond. And their response was kind of like, we're trying to make this amicable. Like, 
whatever all of that kind of jargon trying to make it seem like joe's not a bad guy but they were like but the girls are american citizens but if you do a quick little google search they're also british citizens citizens. (laughs) so like that means nothing again like it's those little jobs making it sound like sophie's being crazy or like an unfit mother being like oh she's trying to kidnap her american citizen children and take them to england it's like they're also british citizens but yeah whatever it was interesting so this came out basically a whole week ago and i think a lot of us had have more time to sit with it but i think like when it came out it was pretty shocking we're like yeah like sophie sue he's suing joe yeah like for a while like why is she suing him all this stuff and then you read the details it's like joe's withholding their passport like it sounds very all of it sounds very severe yeah and i think maybe it's not maybe it's not i mean i don't know that now that we've had more time to like sit with it, it doesn't feel as severe as like when we first like read all of this but also isn't there more news as of today yeah so as of today there was an article on people by hannah Sachs saying that on monday so today is september 25th an interim consent order was filed stating that sophie turner and joe jonas must keep their two daughters in the southern and eastern districts of new york The filing revealed that both Turner and Jonas consented to this arrangement and that it comes just after Turner sued Jonas last week for wrongful retention of the couple's kids, claiming that he was withholding their passports. So clearly, like, while they figure everything out, like, I think they're both, like, everyone's going to be in the New York area to, like, take care of the kids, whatever. But again, I just think it's funny because at no point is, like, Florida mentioned, whereas Joe's, like, doing all these filings in Florida, so... I think that obviously from this, my perspective of it is that Sophie's lawsuit held more water than Joe's did and that he got afraid. Interesting. Is my perspective. Again, like not a lawyer. I I know journalism yeah. law. Like <laughs> it's yeah. like personal opinion on it. Yeah. But I just think like it is really interesting. And again, like how we say pop culture just like really translates to real life and all these things, I think is just crazy to see again another situation where everybody is like rallying behind a woman publicly and i feel like it's reached the point where like men can't get away with the shit they used to especially when the woman is well liked which i think is also interesting because like if you listen to our aces interview their take on this is men kind of (laughs) suck yeah literally But but i i don't know i'm just like really taken with the fact that like sophie is so many uh, people are team sophie but also just like she was already really well liked like my thing is is that like priyanka just like as an example because she's with another jonas brother priyanka is not as well liked and not as well received and so i would have been really curious because a lot of people were speculating that like their relationship would be the one that wouldn't have worked i never thought that like nick jonas is obsessed with her but also like she's too scary to break up with i think like she's like a very strong (laughs) woman like i you could never whatever she wants she gets is my (laughs) um (laughs) but it would have been interesting to see if it had been like them and that they had gone the same route in regards to trying to make her seem like an unfit mother public perception if the public perception would have been the same because i don't know it's just interesting because like if you think about like Amber Heard and then like Evan Rachel Wood, like there were more people backing Evan Rachel Wood. And obviously everybody was like, Amber Heard's a liar and a gold digger. And it's like, what she planned this when she was 20 to get Johnny Depp to fall yeah. in love with her. So what? So then, yeah, whatever. So it is interesting, like in that regard, because like, I want to take these things as like when wins for women all around and be like, look at like this positive thing. But it's like, if you really think about it, which like obviously we've been able to for the past like three weeks now that this has been happening, it's like this is such a positive situation and like women coming together to support a woman because Sophie has already and has been well liked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Also, just because we're a few weeks into this now, nothing yet has come out against Joe, like yeah. painting him in a negative light from Sophie's side. Yeah. And our previous theories, which like I'm still very curious to see how it plays out. Our previous theories thus far are leaning in my direction as far as I think that there was family, like a family, some sort of family fight feud going yeah. on. Because even in the article from Long Crime, like said that joe like has 
made public statements, which I think was just like on stage. Like he didn't really say anything. I feel yeah. like it was just on stage at like Jonas Brother concerts saying that he, like, don't believe anything unless it comes from my mouth. Yeah. As in like, don't believe what's being said to TMZ. And I'm like, okay, so like who's telling TMZ all this stuff? Like, yeah. I'm like, if he truly believes that, like also say something louder, like don't be annoying about it. Yeah. But so far we haven't found any because sarah's point was that he must have done something really bad and he's trying to throw sophie under the bus so that if anything bad comes out about him it won't look as bad but yet but so far we don't have any additional details yeah i mean so also though like sophie could just be trying to take the high road and not want to yeah, but yeah, like that's very possible because i i completely agree with you i do think that like there must have been some sort of and i think it's a lot to do with the fact that she wanted to move to england and I think yeah. that his family was, like, really against it. Like, in the court filings, they say that they got in a fight on August 15th. And that's what led to this. August 15th is Joe Jonas's birthday. And also, if you... Somebody on TikTok had this, and I'll try and find it. But, like, pu- like the public record of, the, of their house being up for sale. The house did not sell until his birthday. And they put it on the market in February of 2023. So, the speculation amongst fans is that the fight was... Was that Sophie thought the house had already been sold... And it hadn't. And she was like, I thought we were making England our forever home. And Joe's like, well, my family doesn't want that. Again, speculation. But I feel like that feels very plausible. Just again, based off of New Jersey Pentecostal Italians. <laughs> I'm so sorry to any of you if you're Listen New Jersey. Listen to our last Pentecostal. episode if you need an explainer on that one. <laughs> Listen to our last episode if you need an explainer on that one. <laughs> But in seriousness, like, I fully agree with Jenna in the regard to, like, yes, I think, like, family was more involved in the negative press because they're trying to make Sophie look bad because they want the girls to stay in America. I still am on the hill that Joe did something wrong based solely on the fact that I am on the New York City side of the Internet. And this man has been, like, showing up at random clubs and doing random DJ nights unannounced. And, like, seen with, like, girlies around Manhattan. So I'm, like, he must be doing something wrong. Like, he had, like, I just, like, I can't, I can't, I can't fathom in my mind, like, him not fucking around. Just based off of, like, him partying in the city while his wife is abroad. Time will tell. Or maybe yeah. it won't. She takes the high road. But I think it's just interesting to see, again, how it's playing out, like yeah. as Sarah mentioned. It's been very interesting. So, I mean, obviously, this is going to be a continuously ongoing story for a while. This isn't, like, a Taylor Maddie flash in the pan relationship. This okay, is... that, well, that went on went for a while, okay? We had six weeks of pain with that one. That went we on for a while. We did have six weeks of pain, but it was only six weeks of pain. They could have dated for, like, two years. It would have been in pain every week. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna like take a while you know like it's not but i'm just saying like if there is a week where we're not talking about it that doesn't mean that it's not going to come up again like this is an ongoing situation i feel like just based off of where we are right now with the news in regards to the fact like they've decided amicably to like stay in new york for the kids right now whatever that means like i feel like it's going to be a little bit less exciting on the news front in regards to this for a little bit but i think that like in a couple months from now, it's going to pick back up again. So it'll be interesting to yeah. see where it goes. Yeah. I'm most interested to see what goes on with Travis and Taylor over the coming weeks, because that <laughs> feels like a snowball is just like rolling down a hill. And obviously we know that you guys have a lot of thoughts and feelings about that since all of the responses to our Instagram stories <laughs> in regards to it have been crazy. So if you have any thoughts or feelings, you can come hit us up on social media. We are at name three songs on all platforms. We would love to gossip with y'all. If you have any personal beef, whatever <laughs> love you want to throw our way, you can do so on social as well. I'm at Sarah underscore Fagan on all platforms and Jenna is at Jenna underscore million. So with all that being said, thanks for joining us this week on name three songs. And until next time, never let anyone make you feel bad about your favorite band. And remember, you're never too cool to listen to Jungkook. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified when each episode comes out and leave us a five-star review. They really help. If you want to find out more about any of the sources we referenced in this episode, you can visit name3songs.com. 